All right, so we're going to have to review one more time because if you understand this first part, you got the whole chapter taken care of. Bases are ionic, like N-A-O-H. They have ions locked in them. They have the ions locked inside. To unlock them, you put them in water, and then they break apart into ions. It's called dissociation, and they're terrific electrolytes. They conduct electricity due to free ions. Where acids, an acid is not an acid until you put it in water. Well, why isn't it an acid until you put it in water? Because acids, like this, are covalent. They don't have any ions in them. They share electrons. So when you put them in water, don't forget what happens. This H plus, when it floats over the water molecule, the strong electronegativity from the oxygen rips it right off. And it forms this. That is acid. That's called hydronium. Now, if it's a wickedly strong polar molecule, it will ionize a lot, which means it's a strong acid and it's a really, really good electrolyte. If it's a weak covalent substance like this, where the sulfur isn't very electronegative, then if it's weak, and you put it in water, it won't form very many ions. It won't ionize very much, so that's a weak acid. Okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you and reviewing this again is because we have to now go over some definitions of acids and bases. Okay, sorry, but we have to review a little bit because there's a couple things that are going to trip you up. So, don't forget, salts are ionic compounds. How can you tell? They got a metal hooked to something else, all right? And solid salts don't conduct electricity because they don't have any free ions. But these salts, there are three types of salts. I have them in water. And what water does to most salts is it breaks them up into ions. That's, remember the word, if an ionic compound breaks up, it's called dissociation. And if the water breaks up the ionic compound into ions, it conducts electricity. It's an electrolyte solution, okay? These are ionic compounds. Now, not all ionic compounds are gonna break up in water, but that's on reference table F. All right, we're good. Bases. Remember, Arrhenius said, if a substance is put in solution and it yields OH minus ions, it's a base. So look at these bases. NaOH, AlOH3, NH4OH. They are all ionic compounds, all of them. And when you put most bases in water, and remember, the base has to have a metal in front and then the hydroxide in back. The only exception is when you have ammonium. If ammonium's in front and hydroxide's in back, that's a base. Now, most bases, when you put them in water, will break up into ions. But there's a lot of bases, when you hook them to metals, they don't break up very much. So they're not very good electrolytes. Okay? So, ionic compound, put it in water, most break up into the metal ion and the hydroxide ion. And you have yourself a base and electrolytes. These guys over here, the acids. How do you tell if you got an acid? You got an H in front hooked to something else, and it has to be in water. Remember my rule. An acid isn't an acid until you put it in water. But these 
are not ionic compounds. They don't have ions in them. So when water hits these, they break up maybe a little bit, maybe a lot into ions. And so this is not dissociation, this would be ionization. And we're going to go over this a lot later on. But I am mainly concerned with these guys right now. How to figure out if it's a base or not. Because there's some very tricky substances out there that look like a base, but they aren't. Okay? All right, so watch. There are certain substances called alcohols. They look like a base. Here's what they are. CH3OH, C2H5OH. So why do they look like a base? They have OHs. They have hydroxides hooked to them. But they're not a base because they don't have a metal in front they have C's and H's in front, okay? So there's like 20, 30 different types of alcohol, but we're only gonna concentrate on these two. Now, we don't know about them. I've never told you about alcohols before. So let's see what happens when you put an alcohol in water, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little distilled water in here. Then I'm going to pour some alcohol in here. Now you know distilled water doesn't conduct electricity. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some distilled water in. Hmm. No layers. So if there's no layers, it must be a solution. And if it's a solution, that means that the alcohol dissolved in the water. Now, if the alcohol dissolved in the water, let's see if it conducts electricity. Okay, so I just poured some ethanol in here and there's a little bit of distilled water in here, if it conducts. It does not conduct. But isn't this weird? Because ethanol doesn't conduct electricity, but it dissolved in water. Water's polar. This stuff must be polar. But, we use this ethanol in gasoline. Gasoline is nonpolar, and yet ethanol doesn't separate out when you put it in gasoline. So ethanol not only dissolves in polar water, it dissolves in nonpolar gasoline. What the heck is that? And neither one conduct electricity. So you're not going to get screwed up when you see OH, which is hydroxide, hooked to some C's and H's. It's not a base. It's an alcohol. Now listen to this crazy reason why it can dissolve in both a polar liquid and a nonpolar liquid. You all remember this. That's methane. That's a symmetrical molecule. Even though it has unequal sharing between the C's and the H's for electrons, it's symmetrical. If it's symmetrical, it's a nonpolar liquid. 
Okay, now check this out. That is also symmetrical. All right, so that's a nonpolar substance. But if I substitute OH, which is a hydroxide group on that nonpolar molecule, I get something crazy. So that is this C2H5OH. That is ethanol. That's an alcohol. And remember, we said it dissolves in both polar liquid water and nonpolar liquid octane or, or gasoline. This is the reason why. This part of the molecule is the nonpolar part. This part of the molecule is the polar part. That's insane. So, alcohol, at least methanol and ethanol, the first two alcohols, can dissolve in both polar liquid water and nonpolar liquids, like gasoline. So, so many people confuse this, and they say, that's a base. No, it's not. That is not a base. It's an alcohol. Don't forget that. If it doesn't have a metal in front of that OH, it's not a base, okay? That's one thing you have to know. And alcohols don't conduct electricity, so they are non-electrolytes. That's the first trick. Second substance that we haven't talked about yet. You know what they are from biology. That's glucose and that's sucrose. These are both sugars. Okay? Now, I have sugar right here. This is table sugar. This is sucrose. So I'm going to pour some distilled water in here. Put a little sugar in. Stir it up. And the sugar dissolves. So sugar dissolves in water. But now the question is, is sugar an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte? Does it break up into ions? Well, let's see. Here we go. It does not conduct electricity, so that means that it doesn't break up into ions. So. The two things that are non-electrolytes that we know so far, for sure, alcohols and sugars. Alcohols and sugars dissolve in water, but they don't break up. Remember that, that's on a lot of questions. A lot of questions in your review book and on my packet. Okay? All right. Now we can go on. And the first definition is from this guy. And he lived about 1865 to 1920. Long time. And his name was Arrhenius. He was a Swedish chemist. And he said that a solution that yields these things if a solution yields H plus ions it's an acid. But what he really didn't understand was 
Eight, remember we talked about H plus, H plus is simply a proton. There's no electrons, there's no neutrons. So H plus is a bare proton. But what he didn't know is they hook up with the water molecule. So H plus, what Arrhenius said is it's an acid if it has H plus ions in solution. But there, there's no free H plus ions floating around in water. They're all sucked up by the oxygen. So here's what an acid actually is. H plus equals H plus a Q. That means the H plus is on the water, which is this. H3O plus, which is hydronium. So whenever you see H plus AQ, H plus, or H3O plus, that means it's an acid. So that's our Hanius' definition of an acid. A solution which yields H pluses. But we all know H pluses are really this. Now, what he said about bases is even easier. He said a base is a solution which yields these. OH minus, which is hydroxide in solution. So Arrhenius' definition of an acid yields H plus ions in solution. Arrhenius' definition of a base yields OH minus ions in solution. Okay? Now we have another definition. And this is the big one. This is the most important one, I think. And this is called the alternate acid. alternate acid definition. And we did one. We're going to do another one right now. Watch. Remember I said an acid isn't an acid until you put it in water. So this is hydrogen fluoride. Okay? It's a gas. When I put it in water, Remember, the fluorine is Rambo of all elements. It's the strongest electronegativity of all. So it's really pulling hydrogen's electron closer to it. So it looks like this. So if you look at this thing, fluorine is so electronegative, it's pulling hydrogen's electron way over toward it. So H is really like a bare proton hanging off the fluorine. And when this flows over the H2O, that O is going to steal that H plus like this. Okay? So for an alternate acid definition, an alternate acid, what did it do when you put that in water? The acid donated the bare proton or donated the H plus. Okay? So the definition for alternate acid, it donates a bare proton. So now take a wild guess what the definition of an alternate base is. An alternate base accepts the bare proton. So we have two perfectly opposite things. Alternate acid donates the H+, plus. alternate base accepts the H+. Plus. Okay, now we're going to do one full out. A lot of questions on acid base deal with this right here. So we are going to start with this, HF plus H2 
to O. Now watch. The HF donates an H plus or bare proton to the water, which makes this H3O plus. And what's left is this, F minus. Now, whenever you see H3O plus, that is always an acid. Always an acid. Okay, can't be anything else. So watch how this works. If I look over on the other side, what did HF turn into? It turned into F minus. So HF must have donated a proton to turn into F minus. So HF is an acid because it donated. And what it turned into is its alternate base. So, acid HF, its alternate base is F minus. Now, if we look the other way, what did H3O turn into over there? H3O plus turned into H2O. So if H3O plus turned into H2O, that must have donated. So that is the acid, and this is its base. I'm going to show you an easy way to figure out the acid-base pairs in just a minute, but you have to understand something. Going this way, HF gave uh, H to H3O turned into that. Now, going this way, the H3O plus turned into H2O. That must mean it donated one to that going that way. These are called alternate acid-base pairs but there's a much easier way of doing it. So watch this next one. So, I give you the entire equation. The question is, what is the acid-base pairs in this equation? Watch how you figure it out. Find two substances that differ by one hydrogen. H2SO4, HSO4. They differ by one hydrogen. The one that has one more hydrogen is the acid. The one that has one less hydrogen is its base. So H2SO4, HSO4. This is the acid. Here is its base. Now look at these two. H3O plus H2O. That has one more H plus. That is the acid. This is its base. Now the easy thing about this is that's how you can figure it out, but you can't have two A's on one side, you can't have two B's on one side. So H2SO4 and HSO4- minus are the acid-base pair going this way. H3O plus and H2O are the acid-base pair going this way. Got it? Now watch. So what this says is the alternate acid has one more H plus than its base. This is the alternate acid because it has one more H plus than its base. Pretty easy 
to do to find the alternate acid base pairs. Okay, now we're going to try one. You're going to do this one. And you might as well write it down because you're going to send it in uh, via email. Okay? So what you're going to do with that, you're going to write it down and then you're going to label the acid-base pair in the forward reaction and then the acid-base pair in the reverse reaction. Okay? You get that done. So if you're confused about alternate acids and bases, remember the packet I gave you here, the first page is naming acids and bases. If you turn the page, Forget the top part, that's pH, we're going to do that later. But on the bottom, it has Roman numeral 3 hydronium ions. This explains everything. You don't even have to take any notes. This explains how you do it. And then there's two problems at the bottom. And that will explain how to figure out which ones are alternate acids and alternate bases. We're going to spend a lot of time on alternate acids and alternate bases. There's a lot of questions in your packet about that. So you'll be experts at that in a day or so. Okay. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to go over acids that are, that are on reference table K. So if you can get out your reference table K, we're going to do each acid at a time and this is where you're going to have some homework to email me. Okay? Alright. So the first acid you see on reference table K is HCl, and notice all the acids have AQ next to them because an acid is not an acid until you put it in water. Then the O from the water steals the hydrogen from the strong polar acid, and it creates something over there. I'm going to show you the first one like I did before, and then you're going to do it with the rest. But the first thing you're going to do is on this corner over here, you're going to write this. HCl. Strong. HNO2. Strong. HNO3. Strong. Okay, these are strong acids. There's more of them, but we're going to do every single one. I just don't have room for all the other ones. So that means when you put these in water, they are going to break apart a lot, which means they're going to ionize a lot, form a lot of ions, and they will be super electrolytes. So I'm going to do the first one for you. We're going to do alternate acid-base pairs. Then you're going to do the rest for me. All right. So we put this in water. Now watch because this is something new. The arrows will tell you if it's strong or weak. So we're going to go like this. So that means that the forward reaction is really, really favored. That means that HCl is going to break up a lot. So remember, the H is stolen by the O. And now we have this on the other side, H3O plus plus Cl minus. Now, I did that. You're going to do it for these other ones, but you got to find the acid base pairs, the alternate acid base pairs. Remember, you can't have two A's on one side, you can't have two B's. And the easy way to figure out an alternate acid-base pair, again, look for two things that look identical, except they are different by one hydrogen. There's HCl, there's Cl. That has one more hydrogen. 
that is the acid and this is its conjugate or alternate base. Now, here are two that look the same, but remember what I said, H3O plus is always acid. You can always label that A. And that has three H's, that has two H's. So that's that one. So that's your alternate acid-base pair. And don't forget, the acid's definition for alternate acid donates the proton or the H+. The base accepts the proton. All right, so we got acid-base pair in that direction, acid-base pair in that direction. Now, what you are going to do is I'm going to do one more for you, but then you got to do the rest. And that's going to be HNO2. I'll do that one next. Once again, very strong. And the water, the O, which is wickedly electronegative, steals the H, and it becomes this. And then you got to do your pairs. So all the rest of them, except the very last one, I'm going to, you're going to do, and then I'm going to do the very last one for you. So. I want the AB pairs. I want what the products are, and I want to know your acid-base pairs. That is going to be what you're going to email me. All right, so let's go through the other acids. The next three acids. Okay, H2SO3 and H2SO4, label them strong. Okay, I'll do one of these because I'm such a nice guy for you. All right, so we're going to put this in water. Again, big arrow this way, little arrow this way. Now, remember that water is only going to steal one of the H's. It's only going to steal one of them. So I get H3O plus, plus on the other side, since it only took one of the bare protons, which is, in hydro, which is a hydrogen, I have this. HSO3 minus 1. And then, I mean, I'm sure you can figure out the acid base pairs. Okay? So, that's a strong acid. H2SO4, that's sulfuric acid, that's battery acid. That's really strong. So, uh, once again, arrows like that. But now we get to the special one. We talked about this the very first day. H3PO4, I want you to write MED for medium strength. Now watch. It's, look at the arrows. It's not 
all the way to the, this, the reaction is not going forward and forming tons and tons of ions. Now, this stuff is called phosphoric acid. And like I said, we talked about it the very first day. Well, 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 look what we have here. We have a cola, and I don't care if it's Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Dr. Pepper. Any cola has that in it, phosphoric acid. Why does a cola have phosphoric acid in it? Because it makes the taste less sweet, but most importantly, it's there to kill all the bacteria because there's so much sugar in these sodas. I'm going to show you how much sugar there's in there. Okay, so in this little teeny bottle of cola, there's 39 grams of sugar. I'm going to show you what 39 grams looks like. Okay, so that's on tear, so now that weighs zero. So now we're going to see how much 39 grams of sugar is. This is how much sugar, 39 grams, is in this little bottle. Sugar is your enemy. So are sodas, actually. But this much sugar could create a lot of bacteria. That's why the phosphoric acid is used in there. Now, the bad part about phosphoric acid is it takes calcium off your bones. You don't want calcium taken off your bones. You don't want weak bones. And you guys are, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. You are making your bones thick. And you can make your bones thick up to age about 22, 23. After that, you just maintain. But right now, you should be trying to make the thickest bones possible. And that is by not drinking anything that has phosphoric acid in it. You understand that? So how do you get calcium on your bones? Weight-bearing exercises, calcium fortified, orange juice, and also any type of dairy product. Yogurt, cottage cheese, milk, anything like that. So you want to be strong. Your bones going to be strong. Don't drink a lot of this. Now, I don't mind Coca-Cola. I drink maybe one or two a week, but I do a lot of exercises too. So that's phosphoric acid. And uh, yeah, it's also found in some iced teas. Just look on the label. If it's got phosphoric acid in it, maybe you don't want to drink it. Okay. All right. That's a little shot about phosphoric acid. Now, I want you to find the two the products here and do your acid-base pairs, all right? Now we're going to do the next couple acids. Okay, now in every single carbonated beverage, you have that acid, carbonic acid. And carbonic acid, watch. What does that mean about carbonic acid? Does it ionize a lot? Does it break apart a lot? Look at the arrows. It doesn't break apart a lot. Carbonic acid is a weak acid. All right? Now, you find the products and you find your alternate acid base. I'm going to do this one for you. Okay? Now, this is called either ethanoic acid or acetic acid. It's on your reference table. It's the very last acid on your reference table. And acetic acid 
is the acid found in vinegar. So I'm going to pour a little bit in here. This acetic acid has already been placed in water. Look at acetic acid. Did it ionize a lot? And I don't think so. Hardly ionized at all. It just lit the light bulb a little bit. So what we're going to put just like that. It basically stays acetic acid. It doesn't ionize very much. Okay, I'll do this one for you because it's a little tricky. This one doesn't have an H in the front to take off. But remember we talked about this. There's two types of acids. You got H in front or you got Ku in the back. And so what happens is this H right here gets ripped off by the O from the water molecule. So now you have to figure out what's left on the other side. So here's your homework for this lab so you can email it to me. I want you to figure out the acid-base pairs and the products for all the acids on reference table K, except obviously the ones I did for you. All right, so you're going to write everyone down, you're going to find the products, and then you're going to do the acid base pairs. All right? Okay. That's the end of this video. And you're going to be getting an email because on Monday, we start a video conference and it's going to be with Microsoft classes and I'll explain everything in your email to all of you. Okay, all right, that's a wrap.